My name is Jack Buckby, I'm a British Conservative and for the last two years me and my American fiancé Martina Marcota have been the target of a harassment campaign by Antifa with a view to destroying our relationship, destroying our lives and getting me banned from America so we can't be together. And that's exactly what they did. For the last two years I've been unable to enter the United States. Um, I have no criminal record, no criminal history whatsoever, never broken any visa requirements. Uh, I'm banned from the United States, I'll explain how shortly. Um, and I've had no answers from the government, no answers from the embassy, no matter who has tried to help me, no answers have been given. And I'm doing this video today because, well, for a long time I didn't want to talk about this too publicly. I've spoke about it publicly, but not given a great amount of detail because I didn't want to show that Antifa had won, but the sad truth is, they have. Um, they're very, very good at destroying people's lives. Um, so I want to talk about it for that reason, in, in the hope actually that maybe someone can help, someone who sees this can help. Um, but also in the hope that actually it educates some people about how nasty the left has become. Um, so let's start in February 2017 when all this began. Um, so in February 2017, I intended to visit my fiance. Uh, we weren't getting married uh, just yet. That wasn't our plan at the time. Um, so I applied to go to the United States under an ESTA, which is uh, a visa waiver. It's the most common way people enter the United States. If you're coming from England, uh, I've been using it since 2010, never had a problem with it. I've never broken any visa restrictions before. My Esther's always served me well. Um, I've gone to the US legally, and that was that. Um, but as I was applying for my ticket, I checked my Esther online to see if it needed updating, and it said travel not authorized. So I tried to update my visa, I, I, my Esther. I, I paid the fee, and again, it said travel not authorized. Now, this could have been canceled, this Esther, anywhere between November 2016, when I was in the United States. I was in New York hosting an election night party. Um, celebrating Donald Trump's win, um, and January um, of 2017. So it's quite possible and likely, in fact, that this Esther was cancelled during the Obama administration. Um, but it's also possible it was cancelled a bit later in February, because on the 8th of February, my fiancé Martina and I received a phone call from the New York offices of the FBI, not the kind of phone call you ever expect to get. Uh, we rerouted that call, by the way, to make sure that it was legitimate because we didn't quite believe it. We rerouted it and called the FBI offices ourselves and spoke to that same person. It was indeed the FBI, and they told me that um, submissions tips had been submitted to the FBI claiming that I was a terrorist and I was planning to get into the United States to commit terrorist atrocities. Um, long discussion with the FBI ensued. Obviously, they knew all about me because they've been looking me up, and it's the FBI, and they know everything. And they looked me up and they spoke to me and they confirmed with me that they knew this was a fake tip. Uh, I have no criminal history whatsoever. I'm certainly not a terrorist. Uh, in fact, a large part of my political work for the last almost decade has been anti-terrorism. So they told me that they understood the tip was fake, uh, that it was likely politically motivated, and the FBI cleared me. And uh, I thought that was that. So in March 2017, thinking that, well, perhaps the Esther cancellation was something to do with the FBI um, issue, maybe now I should apply for a tourist visa uh, just to go over to the United States for a, a week or two. Um, so I went to the U.S. Embassy on the 22nd of March, that, the day of the Westminster attack. I remember it <laughs> the day because that's what happened that day. So I went to the embassy and I went through the usual process of waiting hours and hours and hours through the bureaucracy. Um, applying for my tourist visa and the woman looked at it and she said oh yeah it seems fairly normal um, you use your Esther so much and you come to the US so much that maybe they just want you to get a proper tourist visa and I thought oh okay great so I go on to the next booth and suddenly the person behind the booth is looking at me and looking at the screen and looking at me and looking at the screen and stroking the chin and calling someone else over to look at it and they look kind of horrified and shocked actually which was kind of worrying um, and then they denied me they just handed back my passport and said, no, it's been denied. You're in administrative processing, uh, which is basically an FBI check, as far as I'm aware, which should take 60 days. Um, it's been almost two years, um, almost two years since I've left, uh, been to the United States. Um, since this day, 22nd of March 2017, it's at least a year and a half ago. So certainly more than 60 days. So then came some congressional assistance. Um, on the 29th of March, a deputy district director for a congressman, who I'm not going to name, attempted to help me. Uh, they forwarded the information to a staff member at the Homeland Security Committee. Uh, a request was submitted to the Department of Homeland Security for information, um, and the response I received was as follows. 
I have spoken to the FBI and to US Customs and Border Protection and all I can say is that your name is being flagged for something in the ESTA application system. So just to confirm yet again, um, I have no criminal record. I've never broken any visa restrictions. I've never so much has had a parking ticket. Um, I obey the law. Um, but still, there's something on the system stopping me. No answers from the embassy whatsoever, despite a request coming in from an official. Uh, and from here, I had no other option than to just continue waiting for the embassy to get back to me in the hope that maybe it would take just a bit more than 60 days. Um, but it was futile. Clearly, the embassy had absolutely no intention of even responding to me. So in December 2017, on December 14th, another congressman wrote a letter to the US Embassy asking for any information that was pertinent to my case. And the emb embassy responded with practically no information. This is what they said. Thank you for your correspondence on behalf of the congressman regarding Jack Buckby's application for a non-immigrant visa. Mr. Buckby's application is subject to additional mandatory administrative processing. While administrative processing usually lasts up to 60 days, in some instances it can take significantly longer. Mr. Buckby will no be notified by email as soon as the review is complete. He should therefore ensure his email address on his account is up to date. I hope this information is helpful. Sincerely, Chief Consular Information Unit. Well, the information wasn't helpful at all and further requests have been made by this congressman but the embassy has still provided no answers whatsoever. In April 2018, I was getting pretty desperate. Uh, I was contacting every single contact I could think of that might have some influence or might know somebody within the system who could just look me up and see what's going on. So a friend of mine had a contact in the Department of Justice who owed him a few favours. Um, and I might add that out of all the evidence I've got on this, this is the least um, certain. It's the most shaky because I can't prove it. Everything else I can prove. Um, but what was really weird about this is my friend's contact in the Department of Justice looked me up and it said that I was on the system as having threatened to rape somebody, somebody called Barbara and Toomey. Now, Barbara and Toomey is a woman that I was on Channel 4 live with. Um, it was an interview uh, about immigration. Actually. I can't remember. It was a while ago. And I was pretty rude to her on live television. I, w I will grant that. And I probably said something I shouldn't have. Um, what I said to her was, if you take in a Syrian refugee, I hope you don't get raped. Uh, of course, referencing the migrant rape uh, crisis in Europe. Um, as I say, pretty rude. Maybe I shouldn't have said it. I definitely shouldn't have said it, actually. Um, but it certainly wasn't a threat. It was me saying, if you took in a refugee, I hope you don't get raped. But the Department of Justice apparently, apparently, has me listed as having threatened to rape this girl. So if this is in fact the case, then it's another example of the far left submitting fake tips to US authorities, which is a crime. This is a crime. Submitting fake tips is a crime. And it's a thing that happens to other people too. But it's a tactic used by the left because they know it's so easy to smear people. So it's quite possible that part of this story is a false rape uh, threat accusation. If it is the case, then all it requires is the US Embassy in London to take a look at the video which is on YouTube of me during this interview, which proves this threat didn't happen. Um, however, the US Embassy London has provided no information and not let me know who is even in charge of my case, so I can't contact anybody to show them this video and show them that yet again, a fake tip has been made by Antifa. So in May 2018, I wanted to make sure that there was nothing on the British system that showed me as some kind of criminal. I mean, you know, in, in the UK, if you dare talk about certain political issues, uh, you're likely to get locked up or in trouble. So I thought, well, maybe there's something I don't know about. So I uh, inquired. Um, you can do that in the UK. You can request all your police files. And on the 10th of May, I received correspondence from the police, uh, an official documentation showing that I have zero criminal record. I have barely had any interaction with the police over the years and the only time I've ever had interaction with the police is when I've said yes sir, of course sir, um, I abide by the law, I do what the police tell me to do. Um, so I knew this was true so it means that the issue must indeed be on the US side with these two fake tips. In September of 2018, very recently, the office of a New York congressman helped me um, and they researched the issue and what they found and told me was that this is a, quote, federal judicial issue and that it would require court, which was news to me. Um, that's all the information they could tell me, all the information the congressman's office could tell me. Um, but I don't know what the issue is. I don't know what I'm accused of. 
and I don't even know which court I'm meant to be going to and who I'm meant to be taking to court. I have received no information from public officials, from government officials, from the US Embassy, and I have not been to the United States for two years. I've been banned from entering, and all based on these lies. So today, I've been unable to go to the States to meet my fiance's family. I've never met them, and I've also been able to visit my fiance's sister, who's been suffering with leukemia. I've been unable to go to see that family. It's been extremely distressing, not just for me, but for my fiance and for the family. And despite her family dealing with cancer as well, the harassment campaign against us continued specifically against my fiance Martina. They harassed her out of her work. She was a performing artist in New York. They got her fired from her job and they got her, uh, her booking agent to drop her from every single gig. So while her sister had cancer and they were struggling to pay for that treatment, my fiance couldn't even work and help pay for it. She was left with nothing. The harassment campaign continued. So despite the cancer, despite our engagement, these people have started harassment campaigns that destroyed her career and got me banned from the United States because they hate us for our political views. That's literally all it is. If they wanted to ruin our life, then they've done a very, very, very good job of it. And as I say, I'm doing this video today because I wanna get these facts out. And I'm hoping that maybe somebody will see this. Please consider sharing this video with your friends. Um, maybe somebody will see this who can help um, and they can reach me through Twitter and jackbutby.co.uk through my contact form. Please, anyone that thinks they might be able to help with this, please help. Um, but otherwise, please share this video to show just what Antifa can do to people when they want to destroy people's lives. They are the nastiest, these, the most vicious political group I've ever come across. Um, I'm a conservative. I want to manage immigration. I support the president. My fiance supports the president, but that seems a something worth punishing according to these people to the point where we can't start our lives together and start a family and get married uh, and i can't even visit her family so uh thanks for watching